Hello, everyone. Today, I'm going to demo how to create a recovery server in, for DR Cloud in the Acronis CyberProtect Cloud platform. The basic requirements for uh, DR Cloud are you need to have backups saved to the, to the Acronis Cloud, and you need to uh, configure and set up the connectivity between your customer network and the Acronis data center. There are, are uh, a couple of different options there for connectivity, one being the open VPN site-to-site -site connection, where you're going to download a virtual VPN appliance to uh, host on a local hypervisor, either ESX or Hyper-V. Um, there will be some uh, configuration um, settings that need to be set and changed uh, for that VPN appliance. Once that appliance is registered to the customer's account, that will create secure tunnel between their network and the Acronis data center. There are also options for IPsec connectivity from a firewall to our data center as well. And there are some additional uh, configuration um, considerations for IPsec as well. Uh, to create, once the connectivity has been established and the backups are saved to the Acronis cloud, when you click on a device and you select disaster recovery, you'll see a uh, button to create that recovery server. You're not going to see this button until those two prerequisites are completed. When you click on the create recovery server button, you're going to be presented with a template to complete. The first thing you need to do is choose what resources you want to run the server with. Uh, there are eight different configurations in the Acronis Cloud. We have a minimum of a single CPU and two gigs of RAM, up to a maximum of 16 CPU and 256 gigs of RAM. And each one of these has a corresponding point value, anywhere from 1 to 128. So depending on what resources you want to run the server with, these are the points that are charged for every hour of activation. So in this case, if I want a 16 gig server with four virtual CPU, this one will cost me eight points per hour to run. Uh, if I don't activate any machines during the month, I don't generate any, any points, there are no additional charges. At that point, you're only paying for the cloud backup storage as well as the disaster recovery storage for any recovery servers that you've created. Uh, one of the advantages to using the open VPN site-to-site -site connection is that it's a layer two connection. And what that means is that it allows us to stretch the customer's subnet into our cloud. So they'll be able to activate um, using the same IP address in the cloud as they're running in production. So here for uh, the production network, uh, this box should be pre-populated for you because this will be the IP address of that machine that we found when we scanned the subnet. We also provided every customer their own DR test VLAN. So if they want to activate in a test environment, they simply enable the test IP address box here. And when they activate the machine, they can choose whether they want to activate in the test uh, environment or in the production environment. There are a couple of other options here for, um, for the configuration. One is an automated test failover. If this feature is enabled, what we will do is once a month, we'll go in and activate the most current snapshot for that particular device. We spin that machine up to the point where it comes up to the login screen. We take a screen capture of it, and then we shut the machine back down. So now when the customer looks at their list of recovery points, they'll be able to see that um, you know, some of their recovery points have been activated and there will be a, they will be able to see if it was successful or not. And then if it was successful, they'll see a screen shot of that particular login screen and know that that machine was up and running at that point in time. Um, this this uh, automated test failover does consume points. So there is a small charge for this on a, on a monthly basis, but this is an available feature. Um, the internet access um, checkbox allows that machine to have access to the internet. If you don't want 
want, if you're spinning up the machine and you don't want access to the internet, you can disable it. Also optionally, you can purchase a public IP for access for outside access to that machine when it's up and running. This is coming from the pool of public IPs that we own in the Acronis data center. Uh, it's presented at the time of activation. So it's uh, it's basically a round robin and the, the next available IP will be assigned to you to that recovery server uh, on activation. Uh, when you've made your, your configuration adjustments, you click on the create button and now you have a recovery server being created in the Acronis cloud. So if I come over here to disaster recovery, I can look at my list of servers here. Here's the one I just created. It's my SQL server. Uh, it's sitting in standby mode, which means it's ready to be powered on, but it's not consuming any points. I do have a couple here that are running. And so these are consuming points. And I have another one here that's another one in standby. So that is how you would create a recovery server in or DR Cloud in the Acronis CyberProtect Cloud platform. Thank you.